Have you ever been given good advice, but it wasn't necessarily like the right advice? Maybe it wasn't necessarily the best advice, but it was good intentioned. It was good. Like, it, like if you took that advice by itself, it's good. But when you took that advice and applied it directly to your life, not the best. <laughs> not the best. Not the right advice. I have a really good friend of mine. Who, who, he's just a gifted um, young man of God. He's got everything going, going right for him. He's, um, he's smart. He's godly. Uh, he's good looking, ladies. Um, <laughs> he's single. <laughs> um, ever, and, and, and I think, like, truly, like, when I talk to him, every time that I spend time with him, he truly wants to follow the Lord. He truly wants the Lord to direct his life. He wants to walk the path that the Lord has set for, before him. But here's the issue. He has so many people in his life who are speaking good advice to him. And, pe the, and they're good people. These are godly people giving him good advice. But he has so many people advising him. You're so gifted at this. You're so talented at this. Clearly God is calling you to do this. This is how God has set you, has set you apart. And so he's bombarded by every single, by every direction from godly people giving good advice. And they're all different. <laughs> it's all different. Isn't that the worst? <laughs> it's all different. Like some are like, you are gifted in the ministry. You're called to be a pastor. You're called to be a minister, a missionary. And some people are like, no, you need, to be, you need to be more wise. You need to go back to school, get a secondary degree, get another degree, set yourself up for success. And then there are other people who say, you are called to be a professional baseball player. You should, play, you should go play for the Mariners. I know, that came out of left field, right? That's the end of my sermon. I'm just kidding. So he's getting all this advice from all these different directions. Like, who should he follow? And the thing is, every single one of those things, he is good at. And he probably would do well at. And he has all these well-intentioned people urging him on in these different directions. He could take any one of those. And if, if, like, from a worldly sense, he could probably be successful at any of those. I'm not so sure about the professional baseball one. <laughs> but if God blesses it, he could. It could. It could. So what should you do? What should he do when godly people give him good advice? Who should he follow? Whose counsel should he consider? Should it be his mentor? Should it be his pastor? Should it be his teachers? What about his parents? I don't even want to get into that. Like, who should he follow? Should it be his parents? I don't know. All of them are offering good advice, but there is only one who can offer the right advice. He needs to turn to the king. He needs to turn to the king. Right now, we're, in a, we're starting a sermon series called A King for Us. A King for You. A King for Us. And this sermon series centers around the Isaiah 9 prophecy of the coming Messiah. The Messiah that was foretold for hundreds and thousands of years. It's that he is coming and he's going to be an amazing king for you for Israel, and for us who have been grafted into Israel. Amen? This is how the prophecy reads, part of it. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, and then verse 6. It says, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. It's coming. Verse 6, For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the King for us. He's the King for us. 
And so each week during this series, we have four weeks set out, we're going to set, we're going to discuss, we're going to ex- extrapolate, talk about each of these four titles, Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And we're going to talk about how Jesus is that for you. Jesus offers that for you. He came, he lived, he died, so he could do that for you, so he could be the Wonderful Counselor, he could be the Mighty God, be the Everlasting Father, be the Prince of Peace for you. He's not just some faraway God and does it for some exceptional people. He did it for you. And he continues to do it for you every single day. Amen? Are you ready? All right. So today we're talking about how Jesus is the wonderful counselor. The wonderful counselor. The giver of the greatest advice. Because that's what a counselor does, right? We're supposed to. A counselor gives advice. Sometimes when we think of, of the wonderful counselor, we think we, we kind of we kind of miss the mark a little bit. Like when we think of a counselor, we think it's a consoler or a comforter, someone who just listens to your problems and kind of gives you comfort. And that is something that Jesus does. Certainly, God has called God has come to comfort your affliction. But in this passage where God is called the wonderful counselor. He is the king who gives the best advice. He is advising you. Like kings have have a council. Kings have counselors that speak into their lives. What does, I'm I'm racked. The president of the United States has counselors. He has no idea what to do. And so he has people coming from all sides and telling him, like, this is what you should do. This is based on my wisdom, based on my experience. This is how you should handle this situation. God wants to be that for you. He wants to be your counselor. And when it says wonderful, this word wonder, it it means miraculous. It means amazing. It means the absolute best at what he does. So when Jesus is the wonderful counselor, it means he's the best. He gives the best advice. No one can top it in heaven and on earth. His counsel is the best counsel, and it is his that we should take. He gives us not only good advice, he gives us the right advice. Advice that sets us on the perfect path, leads to fulfilled purpose, and brings about eternal good in your life and in those around you. Brings real change. Real amazing things can happen if we take the advice of the wonderful counselor. Amazing things. I have seen it. We have seen it. When you follow the Lord's advice. How many, how many of you want that kind of advice? Me. I, I can't raise it high enough. I got to stand on top of this. I want that kind of advice every single day. To set my feet on the solid path. And go and follow him. Amen. That's what I want. The king can give it to you. The king can give it to you. The wonderful counselor can give it to you. And here's the thing. He absolutely wants to. He's not withholding anything from you. He wants to give it to you. He wants to set your feet on the right path. He wants to direct you. He wants you to do amazing, wonderful things for his glory and to fulfill your purpose. That's what he wants for you. He doesn't want you to struggle knowing your left from your right. He wants to come alongside you. He wants to guide you personally and give you the best advice. But in order to receive God's advice, in order to receive the king's advice, we have to understand, you have to understand that the king's advice is fundamentally different from the world's advice. Left from right, black versus white, they are totally different. Sometimes the world gets it kind of close. But nothing compares to the advice that is given from the wonderful counselor. 1 Corinthians verse chapter 3 says, The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. Foolishness. And it's because our perspective is so clouded. It's so clouded. 1 Corinthians 13 says, We see through a glass dimly. It is like we are walking around and we are wearing glasses that are all fogged up. Has that ever happened to anyone? You like you you open you open the dishwasher a little too soon, whew, just fogs up your glasses. You can't see anything. That happens to me all the time because I'm always opening and grabbing a glass because we're out. <laughs> 
So we walk through the world wearing foggy glasses. We don't know where we're going. We have no idea what's happening. God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke them into existence. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He knows past, present, future. He knows your life. He has known every single action you've taken, and he knows your perfect path. He sees through a glass unclouded. He sees things from every, every single perspective. Well, we are stuck to this 270-degree window. I can't even see what's behind my head. He sees everything. And so when the world comes forth, and it could be the best wisdom we've ever been given, the world gives this. And God says, that's foolishness to me. That's nonsense. To God, that doesn't even make any sense. Because he sees so much more. So much more than us. So while the advice he gives may seem different, it is always trustworthy. It is always trustworthy. So how is it different? How is it different from the world? If we see things through a clouded lens, God sees things clearly. How does the, how does the king's advice differ from the advice that the world, the world gives? And I thought of three things based in Scripture, this isn't just my musings. Three things, in w- three ways in which the king's advice differs from the world advice. Are you ready? Okay, number one. The world advises you to do what is comfortable. The king advises you to do what is purposeful. Isn't that true? The world is always speaking to us, speaking into our lives, saying, do what you're good at. Stick to your strengths. And really, if you look at that, like, that's good advice. It's not bad advice. That's good advice. But when the world says, stick to your strengths, the king says, my power is made perfect in your weakness. My power is made perfect in your weakness. And this is why we see all throughout Scripture, God raising up men and women out of the depths pulling them, yanking them out of their comfort zone into something that they could not do by themselves. It would have been impossible for them to do by themselves. I think of Gideon sitting in the wine press, hiding from this invading army. He's like grinding grain in a wine press. That's not where you grind grain. He's hiding. He's a coward. The story paints him as a coward. And the angel of the Lord comes before him and says, Hail, mighty warrior! You are going to lead the armies of Israel and destroy your enemies. And then Gideon is like, oh, no thanks. <laughs> God pulls him out of his comfort zone and becomes, becomes one of the greatest leaders the world has ever seen. David is the youngest of eight or nine kid, eight kids. When they were picking kings, like uh, Solomon, Solomon, not Solomon, that's his son, Samuel. Samuel like lines up all the brothers And then his dad doesn't even choose David to stand among his brothers. He's just out in the field. God says, no, I want that one. I want that one. And we see over and over and over again that God chooses the C team. He chooses not the, not the varsity team, not the A team, not the B team. God chooses like the kids are just happy to be there. (laughs) That was me, okay? (laughs) He chooses the C team. Because he wants to show his power through them. Because he's the best coach. And so he takes the kids who are maybe not necessarily the best, but they're there and they're trying their best, and he raises them up and he takes them to state and he takes them to nationals and they become world champions because it is his power that is shown through them. He yanks them out of their comfort zone teaches them drills, makes them do all this stuff they're not comfortable with, and makes them the best of the best of the best of the best so he could be glorified and we can fulfill our purpose. That is the kind of advice that is given to us by the wonderful counselor. So good. In your own life, seek the advice from the wonderful counselor who pulls you out of your comfort zone 
pulls you out of your comfort, comfort zone and into what is purposeful. Maybe you're comfortable, talking about serving right now, maybe you're comfortable greeting. Maybe you're comfortable in the tech booth. What if God was pulling you into something you were uncomfortable with? What if God was pulling you to work in kids? That is a huge need in our church. Sometimes we gravitate toward what's comfortable. We gravitate toward our strengths, right? Because this is what's easy. Like, this is how God has gifted me. Yes, God has given you natural gifts. But man, how great would it be? How great is it when God grabs you in your weakness, puts you in something you're uncomfortable with, and then you become amazing because it's not you. It's God. You think if I, like, if, if I was doing what was comfortable for me, you think I'd be standing here right now? Not a chance. Not, no way. You know where I'd be? Hey, Don, will you stand up, please? I'd be right there. He's in my spot. <laughs> I'd be sitting behind that computer. But God called me to be a pastor, and so I stepped out of my comfort zone, and this is where I am, and this is the place of greatest purpose for me. There is a place of greatest purpose for you, and is when you follow the wonderful counselor's advice. Yeah. Step out of your comfort zone. Listen to the one who's calling you, and see your life change, and see people's lives change around you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number two. How is the king's advice different from the world's advice? The world advises you to focus on yourself. The king, of, yeah, that's true. No one, no one questions me on that. The world advises you to focus on yourself. The king advises you to put yourself last. The world says, do what makes you happy, girl. Do it like you do you. Do what makes you happy. Put yourself first. But here's what the king says, Philippians 2, verse 3. Some of you aren't going to like this. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Put TikTok away. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out for only your own interests, but take an interest in others too. It's so easy to want to focus on ourselves, isn't it? Just like get what we want to do, like protect ourselves, focus on our feelings. But the king is calling you to something greater, loving others more than yourselves. I think of the Christmas gift drive, and as a church, we don't gain a lot from that. Like really, we don't, we don't really gain anything from the Christmas gift drive. But what it is, it is an outpouring. It is an outreach. It is saying we are taking... It's a lot of work. It is a lot of money. It is a lot of time, not just for our pastors, but for you as, as a church. It's a lot of time. We're saying we are giving that away, even if nothing comes from it, because God has called us to care for those who are in need, to help the least of these. That is our church listening to the advice of the wonderful counselor. If we were focusing on ourselves, that's not the ministry we would choose. That's not what we would do. It's too much work. Not enough. We don't get enough back. But we're not. And so we don't care about those things. All we care about is putting gifts under the tree of people who wouldn't have any. Putting coats on kids who are going to school in a t-shirt. Because that is showing God's love to the world. That is the amazing call of Christ. Oh, man. In your own life, you will be bombarded with advice. Bombarded. It's saying, this is my favorite. Protect your own self-interest. Always protect yourself. Put yourself first. But you've got to understand, that's not God's heart. Oh, man, I can't, like, like, try and find that in the Bible. Protect yourself. Jesus died on the cross for you. Like, Put yourself first. Jesus became a servant for you. No, the God, God, the God that I worship, the God that I serve, the God that we serve, he is constantly calling us to something greater, to lay our lives down for other people. 
because the goal isn't to bring ourselves up. It's to bring others to heaven. Bring as many people to heaven as we can to show them the love of Christ. Some of these people may never experience the love of Christ in anything except a Christmas gift from Hope and Life Church. And we give them a Bible. And we give them a book about Jesus. And through that, I pray they will be saved. And that is the only reward we need. And when we get to heaven, we will receive that well done, my good and faithful servant, because we listen to the advice of the wonderful counselor. Amen? Don't you want that? Listen to the wonderful counselor who calls you to lay down your life for others. It's the best advice. Oh, man. Number three. The world advises you to live like there's no tomorrow. The king advises you to live like tomorrow is endless. The world says, focus on building this life. Get as much as you can. Get that fancy house. Get that nice car. Get that prestigious job, prestigious title. Start building your own stuff on this life. Do as the best you can with what you have right now. Because this is all you've got. Nothing comes after this. You will live your 80 to 90, maybe 100 years on earth, and then like a puff of smoke, it'll all be gone. Darkness forever. That is how the world lives. And that is so sad. That is so sad. And so the world is trying, in all of its wisdom, which we've talked about being lesser, to get as much as you can out of this hundred years of life as you, as you possibly can. That means putting other people down. That means climbing the ladder, doing the best that you can. That means making decisions that put yourself before others. It means, it, it, it means trying your best to build hordes of wealth so that you can live well during this life because there's nothing coming after. That is hopeless. It is a life without hope but we have been given great hope. We have been given great hope through Jesus that this life is not the end. Hebrews 13, verse 14 says, this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. And if you think, like, think about the percentages. I like thinking about percentages. I don't know why. Like the percentage uh, of your total life that this life is. We live here, let's say, let's, say you do, let's say you do well. You live for 100 years in this earth. You're going to live for eternity in heaven. You're going to live for an endless period of time. It's not just 100, not 200, not 300, not 4, 5, 6, 7. It is billions upon trillions of trillions of trillions of trillions of years, people. This life is so small. Like, it can't even be counted. It's an, it's an infinitely small amount. It goes point zero 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 zero, and there's too many zeros. You never get to one. I might have lost some of you there, but that's fine. <laughs> Do it on a calculator. Go on a calculator and keep dividing one by two over and over again. You'll never get zero. You'll just get close. Right? That's what our life on earth is. It is so small, and yet so many of us spend it on things that don't matter. They take the advice of people that say build wealth, and that's fine. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. God blesses his, his people. God blesses his kids. He's a good father. But it's not God's purpose for you to build wealth. It's not God's purpose for you to have a nice house. It's not God's purpose for you to have a cool job. He uses those things for his glory and his kingdom. So in, God is calling us to invest in things that are permanent. The king gives advice that says, invest in things that will last. In Matthew, it says, um, don't put your treasure in, in things that will, will rust and moths will devour and will, and will be destroyed. Put your treasure in heaven where those things will last forever. God is calling you to something greater. Our church is building something that will last. Hope and Life Church is investing its time, investing its resources in things that are 
permanent. We are bringing real hope and renewed life to people through Jesus. That is why I get up in the morning. That's why we get up in the morning. That's why we do the jobs we do, the work, the ministry that we do. That's why I want so badly, that's why we want as pastors so badly for you guys to come alongside us in this pulpit too. Because the work that God has given us, the advice, the counsel that God has spoken to Pastor Garen and Pastor Shelley is to take care of the world, to bring that real hope and renewed life to not just Auburn, but to our state and to the world. And it's slow going sometimes. But you ask any builder, which, which structure will last? The one that is built quickly or the one that is built with, 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 with intention? That is built, it may take a little bit more time, but when it is done, it is a masterpiece. That's what we're doing here. And that's why I'm proud to be a part of it. We are investing our lives our time, our energy, our finances in something that will last because we have partnered with God's kingdom and we are listening to the advice of the wonderful counselor. And I invite you to come alongside us as we do things according to his work and his will. I'm so ready for, it to, I'm, so, I'm so ready for God to just continue doing amazing things. I'm ready for miracles. I'm ready for salvations. I'm ready for you to go forth like an army bringing people to Jesus. Oh, man. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hmm. When you are seeking advice, listen to the wonderful counselor that calls you to invest in things that will last, to invest in the kingdom. It may require patience, but it is worth it. 100% worth it. And I have one final, but very, 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 very important point that I saved for last before we close. You do not have to be a pastor, a leader, or even an exceptional Christian to receive advice directly from the wonderful counselor. This is not a gift that was reserved for Moses. A gift that this is not a gift that was reserved for David. This is not a gift that was reserved for the pastoral team of Hope and Life Church. He is a king for you. He is the wonderful counselor for you. First Corinthians three, verse twenty one. This is right after God just fin- or right after he just finishes up saying, The wisdom of this world is absolute foolishness to me. <laughs> he says, Oh, uh, So don't boast about following a particular human leader, for everything belongs to you. All the wisdom of this world, don't don't boast about following people who give you that. Everything, all of God's wisdom is given to you. Whether Paul or Apollos or Peter, these are first century leaders, like the best of the best Christians. Whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or Pastor Garen or Pastor Shelley or Pastor Christian or Trump or Biden or the world or life or death or the present and the future, everything belongs to you. Nothing has been withheld from you. Nothing. You have been given unparalleled access to the king. You can come to his throne room any time that you want. Any time that you want. And the same king who advised David, who advised Moses, who advised the apostle Paul. Oh my goodness. The visions these people received. The advice these people received. That is for you. That is your inheritance. Grab it. Reach out and grab it. And when you are bombarded by every single side, by people giving you good advice, you will know That is the advice of the king. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to take it to the bank. And I'm going to walk my life following that advice. And you will get it wrong sometimes. (laughs) I have gotten it wrong sometimes. But you know, if you live your life desperately seeking God's will, looking to Scripture, seeing where when he talks to you, like, does that line up with Scripture? Okay, that's him. 
he will correct your course. He will direct you. And you will walk in the house of the Lord. You will walk on the chosen path he has given to you. You will have everything you need. Nothing is withheld from you. Your life will bring purpose to you and to others, and you will bring him glory, most of all. How many of you want to be a part of that? Amen. Amen. Now, before I close, we never want to end any service without giving an invitation to follow Jesus. And to receive advice from the king, he needs to be king of your life. Like, he's not just, like, this is a partnership between God and his kids, between God and his children. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, is there anyone in this room who does not know Jesus as their king, but who wants to today? Who wants to, I say, I want to make Jesus my king. I want to follow him. Will you just raise your hand in the room or online as well? Would you just raise your hand and let, let us know? Okay. All right, well, everyone together, why don't you all stand to your feet? The whole church will join with you. If you are praying this prayer for the first time, I encourage you to just pray to God. Don't pray to me. Pray to the Lord. We're going to walk you through it here. When we want to follow Jesus, when we want to make him our king, we turn from our sins, we turn to Jesus, make him our savior, and then we let him lead. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Say, Jesus... I know I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. And I turn to you. I want to follow you, God. Be my Savior. Be my King. And Lord, I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I just want to leave you I just want to leave you. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I had one final question, but you know, I'm gonna I'm changing I'm gonna change it a little bit. So I'm gonna read a passage to you. Hebrews four, verse sixteen says, So let us come boldly, boldly, like a child running to their father, running to their mom. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us, to advise us, to counsel us when we need it most. How many of you would say that you need advice from the wonderful counselor today? You need his wisdom. You need his direction. You need his counsel. That's a lot of us. Good. Yeah, me too. 100%. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want to say a prayer over you. Jesus, oh wonderful counselor, oh mighty God, we come boldly to your throne room as your children, as your kids, and we just sit at your feet. We sit at your feet and say, Lord, teach us. Lord, counsel us. Show us our left from our right. Lord, we see things so clouded. And sometimes we have so much advice coming at us from every single angle. It's hard to tell what is your voice. And so, Lord, we just take time right now. Speak to us, God. Show us which way to go. In Jesus' name. And I just want to sit here in this moment for just a little bit longer. Take this time. Seek his advice. Ask him that question that you don't know the answer to. Let's pray.
with the wonderful counselor, God. You want to help your kids. You want to advise them. And so, Lord, we lift our requests up to you, our requests for knowledge, our requests for advice. And, Lord, I pray that you will speak to each and every one of your kids in a discernible, in a tangible way so that there is no doubt left in their mind. We need you, God. We are nothing without you. Bless your kids and be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I just encourage you guys, keep seeking the Lord. It's not something you do on a sun, just on a Sunday. It's not something you do once and say, well, I sought him. He didn't come. He didn't come to the door. I guess he's not there. It's a lifetime pursuit. It's something you have to keep working at. It's work sometimes. Relationships take work. My marriage takes work. Your relationships, your marriages, your friendships, they take work. Why should God's be any different? He's done the work for you, and he wants to meet with you. Keep on seeking him. Seek his advice. Seek the advice of the wonderful counselor. Amen? All right. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Christian. So encouraging. We come boldly. Amen? Amen. Well, if you made a decision to follow Christ, I want to invite you to take out the Connect card in the seat back in front of you. And at the at back of the room, you'll see a box that you can drop it in or any of your, uh, you that wanted to drop off your offering, there's a box back there. Um, and then tonight, we have our gift wrapping party. And so we're going to need to transform this room. If any of you could hang out for a little bit, we're going to stack up chairs. And oh, and there's Jerry to come help us give some, some direction. Um, we're going to stack the chairs, I think, against the wall. Against the wall. And then we're going to bring some tables in. So if you can help us do that. Um, that would be awesome. So that, and then tonight, six o'clock, right here. Okay. Um, and oh, if you did make a f decision to follow Jesus, head to the following Jesus table. Obviously, right? Yeah, out in the out in the lobby. Okay. Have a great week. Hang out and help us if you can. See you tonight. <laughs>